This bloke here makes insanely popular pop music and in today's video I'm going to be uncovering some of his secrets and we're going to create this. Come on! Yes! Absolute banger! As you can hear it's based on this huge smash hit with Eddie Goulding, Miracle, so I wanted to explore how he could revive these old styles and bring them up to date to create something new. I'm also going to be discussing a few of his other production techniques and we're going to be creating everything in this from scratch including the chord progression, pulsing trance bass, so then we're just tweaking the envelope so we've got this pluck, creating driving drum loops, soaring synths, mixing, arrangement and so much more. As usual you can download this project file all the samples completely free using the link below and if you want coaching with me you can check out my accelerator program below this video too where we've helped our students get signed to some of the world's biggest labels. Okay without further ado let's hop into the door and get it done. First thing we're going to do is put the tempo in and that's going to be 143 BPM so we've got that old school kind of trance tempo then we are going to look for a kick. Now, I'm going to go into my favorite kicks and I highly recommend having a favorite kick collection because that's going to allow you to produce much faster basically and then we're just going to put that on every beat nice boom 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 easy and you'll notice I've got my kick peaking at about minus eight I'm actually going to turn that down a little bit I want it peaking at about minus 12 and that's going to help us avoid any clipping on the master channel when we've got everything else in. Lovely jubbly. Okay, next onto that pulsing trance bass. Now Calvin Harris is a master of kind of taking the old and then reinventing it into something new. And that's exactly what he did with the track Miracle with Ellie Goulding. And we're gonna to touch upon more upon his secrets very soon in this tutorial. But let's put that trance bass in. We're gonna to have to pick a key. So let's just pick the simplest key of all, A minor. Very popular, it's very easy to producing because it's only got all the white notes in, so it's very hard to get lost. But if you use the scale feature in Ableton or any of the doors, it makes it even easier because you can just select your scale and hit boom scale and now we've only got the notes from within that scale easy peasy so i'm going to use serum today because i know you guys have got serum or a lot of you and if you haven't it's fine you can kind of recreate this in any synth because it's very easy to understand the workflow of serum okay so first thing we're going to do is just put in a bass that's hitting in between every kick we can actually see here what's happening so we're just going to go boom bow boom bow boom bow like that like robert miles children's style so let's have a listen. I often think it's easier to produce bass higher up than it will be finally, just because it's easier to hear which notes we're hitting. So let's just draw in the notes and then we are gonna craft this sound into that pulsing mbow sound. That's the technical term for that kind of bass, by the way. So let's just change the note to this and we're gonna have a four chord progression. And where should we go now? up to the F maybe. So you can see I'm working within this scale, this template technique here, and it's very hard to hit a wrong note. Boom. So now let's start crafting this into a sound that actually doesn't sound completely gash. So what we're gonna do is first craft the shape of it using ADSR that is the attack decay sustain and release and we're going to switch the synth to mono and that's so we don't have any notes bleeding into each other because we don't really want that when it comes to bass so let's take the sustain down make it a bit pluckier add a little bit of release and now let's actually make that into a bass Cool. So now let's put a filter on that and we're going to use that same envelope to just close that filter down which is going to give us that pulsy bass sound. It's pretty good actually. So quite close there already. So what I'm going to do is add some unison just to spread this out, detune it slightly. Ooh, that sounds good. But I don't want the sub frequencies to be in stereo because that's going to cause what's known as phase cancellation as those left and right big waves kind of clash against each other and cancel themselves out. So what you can do in Serum, uh, there's a couple of ways I teach this, but this is a, a simple way to do it within Serum itself. You can just remove the fundamental frequency and it's just going to take out the lowest fundamental frequency of the note but then our bass is gonna be a little bit weak. So I'm just gonna put it back in with a sub frequency 
And that is not going to have unison applied to it. And that's how it's going to be avoiding unison effects on the sub bass. And then we can fill out the low end if we want. And I've set this di to direct out because it's going to avoid these effects. And I'm just going to add a little bit of warmth to the bass by adding some distortion. Just to dirty it up a bit. Let's try and add another oscillator. But take it down and make sure we send it to that filter as well. That's sounding good. Okay, on to the next thing, magic list. What do you say for me? You say to me, we need a piano that sounds like Robert Miles' children. So what I'm gonna do is add a piano and I'm going to use the M1 piano which is by Korg. Now this is the classic piano sound for dance music. And again, this is why Calvin Harris used it. He uses a lot of the actual old sounds from the style of music that he's kind of doing a new spin on. And that allows him to really capture that spirit and capture that feeling of it. So what we're gonna do is just find the M1. I'm just gonna load it in. I don't have my keyboard set up, but. So at the moment, we've got these different sounds on there as well. So I'm just gonna to go to browser piano and just load in. The one that we want to load in is the M, uh, the piano 16, that's the one. Boom, perfect. Okay, so now we've got our piano, let's program in the melody. Now I usually have my MIDI keyboard, but I don't have it set up today. So we're just gonna do it using the piano roll editor. Again, choose scale A minor, and then just work out a few notes that are gonna work well with your bass notes. And what I'm doing is repeating the pattern, like repeating the shape of the melody to make it more catchy and make it memorable. So we can hear it's working as the bass changes. And I want to repeat it if I can, maybe change one or two of the notes. And the delay will be carrying these notes on in a couple of minutes. So I'm going from down to up and then I'm going for up to down. We'll see how it sounds. So let's put on a delay first. I'm just gonna load one onto an auxiliary channel, piano del and, or decal, popular made up word. And then let's put on a delay. I'm just gonna use the echo that comes with Ableton because it's really nice, got this really nice warm feel. And then let's choose, I think eighths would be the right length of delay. And let's feed some in. But we want it on ping pong, so it bounces from side to side. Yeah, that sounds about right. Nice, okay, we're just gonna work with that at the moment. Next thing we need to do is save this bad boy. What are we gonna call this? Hmm, what shall I call this? It's 90s, let's have a sip of tea and just reminisce back to the 90s. Oh, okay, what I'm gonna call this is the personification, if I can spell it, per what I'm gonna call this is 90s banger, okay? That's what's happening. Okay, on to the drums, because this is gonna be really important when it comes to getting that groove going. So I'm gonna use my own MIDI drums, and then I'm gonna add a loop to it to give it more character as well. Once again, using your own favorites folders makes it so much quicker. So first thing we need to do is find a good clap. So. Okay, something short and snappy will do it. So I'm just gonna load this into my drum rack and I've got these defaults set up just to make it quicker for me. And then I'm gonna program in a clap on every other beat. So, just like that. And then let's repeat that. Boom, 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 clap, clap, clappity clap. And then we need a, a huh hi-hat to go in between the huh claps. So I'm gonna, oh, yep, yeah, let's use that one, which is a little bit dirty, but that's how we like it. And then we are gonna program it in, in between every single kick, like so. Boom. 
but I want to layer that up with something. So let's get a 16th hat in there. Sometimes just the simplest sounds are best for these kind of tracks. As I said before, Calvin Harris uses sounds and techniques from the era in which he's trying to, you know, draw inspiration and draw vibe because that's going to guarantee almost that you are going to come up with something that has a similar feeling. So let's go for a closed hat. I'm just going to go for a 808 closed hat. So let's just bring that in to our 16th and then I'm going to program it in on every 16th. So we'll set our grid to 16th and that means there's going to be 16 of them in each bar, like so. But what I'll do is I'll just take out the first one so it doesn't clash with the kicks. So you can see it's just dropping out for every kick. But I want to add some more movement to that actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to well, firstly take out the low end with an EQ, which I've done, and then I've added a compressor afterwards, which I've named SC Comp. And all that's doing is taking the input from this sidechain trigger track, which is hitting the same notes as the kick. And that's going to duck this 16th hat. So if we listen to this on its own, let's turn the volume up so we can hear. This is what it's doing at the moment. And let's take that sidechain input. So this is off and this is on. So we can see it's just bouncing in time with the kick, which is going to give it more movement to the entire track. So let's just fade that in quietly. It's too much. That's a nice. Nice, okay, now let's get some more action going on in these drums. So I really like to use drum loops underneath and you don't have to use a whole loop, you can just kind of take the bits of it that you really like. So I'm gonna to go to drum loops and I don't know which ones to use again. Nope, not those ones. But I want something with lots of action going. I mean, even that's pretty cool, but we've already got a clap, so we probably don't need the clap in this. But I like those kind of doo doo bongo sounds. So we can take out the claps. And we'll take out the little pre transient. So that's pretty much enough just to loop. So what I'm doing is listening out for the texture of the sound and then just getting rid of everything that isn't absolutely essential. And that's going to allow us to have a nice, clean, kind of clear mix. So now let's fade that in underneath our drums. So that's giving it quite a cool feel. But what I'm going to do is really compress this just to bring out some of those frequencies. It's already been compressed, but I'm going to do it even more because I'm an absolute crazy mofo. Yes, that's got a groove. Loving that. I'm going to spread that out using a free plugin called the Ozone Imager 2. You can download it from the link I'll put below this video. And what we're going to do is just add some more stereo width to this sound. Pushing it out like this. So this is where it was. But we, we can see this red means there's peaking, so I'm just going to take the output down. This is called gain staging, and we go into this in the accelerator in detail, but for now, just be aware that you don't want unnecessary clipping. And now let's load it in, or mix it in. Okay, we need some reverb on this piano. Like, the, the delay is nice, but we need it to sound really epic. So I've created an auxiliary channel there. I've created a reverb on it and just put it to 100% wet because we don't want that dry signal being doubled up. Just giving it a boost in volume and then taking out the low end with an EQ. So now let's listen to the piano and just feed some of it into this reverb. So now it's epicer than it was. That is a actual term, by the way. A bit loud, I think. Okay, that's sounding pretty good. Like, I'm loving it already. So what I'm gonna do is just call this loop 
I'm going to color it green, the natural color of drums. Anyone that says it's not is, you know, it's okay to be mistaken. That's fine. Just, you know, don't come to me bringing me your different color drums when I know they should be green. All right, just nip that in the bud. Next thing is the vocals, which are so important. You know, if you think of that miracle track with Ellie Goulding, it's Ellie's vocals that really bring it to life. OK, and that's another tip that we can take from Calvin Harris, collaborating with other artists, collaborating with already famous singers or up and coming singers, just because it's going to expose your production to more people, as well as making sure that you've got something that sounds good. So we're going to go for vocals and I'm going to actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Loop Cloud plugin and that means we can preview loads of different vocals whilst in tempo with the track at the same time. So we can really preview it. Load up a little MIDI track, load in that Loop Cloud plugin, and then I'm going to go search vocal. We know which track we've decided to write in. So we want a female vocal, A minor, boom. We can search in our library as well. And let's let's just kind of preview a few as we play this through, see what we come up with. I'm surprised at how nice that's all fitting together already. Epic. So that's the kind of epic trance we want. Oh, yeah, we've used that before. But I think that's working really well. Like, that's exactly the vibe we want for this track. So I'm going to create a vocal channel, color it pink, natural color of the th inside of the throat. I spoke to a doctor who confirmed that, by the way. So once again, it's OK to be wrong, but, you know, stop it. And now I should just be able to drag that in like so. Now we can see this is actually 128 BPM and our track's 143. So it's going to be out of time, right? So how do we sort this out? Well, we go into the clip, we make sure if it hasn't been warped, that we warp it with Complex Pro. We're going to warp it again from scratch and then make sure that we program in the BPM here. That is exactly the original sample BPM, which in this instance is 128. So now it should be all nicely in time. We can get rid of the Loop Cloud app. If you want to get Loop Cloud, you can use my affiliate link below. It throws a few pennies to me if you do sign up for it, but I think they've got a free trial as well. It's a very useful tool. Anyway, here we go. Let's just try and mix this in. Okay, so what we need to do is have her start singing just before the beginning of that bar because it's not really working. That's the right place. That lovely syncopated rhythm of her voice works really well. Yes. So it's sounding a little bit flat at the moment, but don't worry, we are going to be going into mixing and arrangement very soon. And this vocal would actually go well. Well, I'm writing a track at the moment with Dua Lipa, so I'm going to link to that. It's not the video is not coming out for a couple of weeks, but click that link there because if you're watching this when it has come out, you can check it out. And yeah, it's it's going to be fun. But let me know if you're enjoying this so far. Give me a hell yeah or an amen brother in the comments below and let me know what style you want me to cover on this channel. I really appreciate it. Nice one. Let's crack on. OK, so next thing we need to do, we've got our vocals. We need to process them and get them sounding amazeballs. Don't say amazeballs, Will. Come on, it's 2023. Good Lord. Right, let's get some compression on there. That's the first thing. And then we're going to get some reverb, some delay. Put a bit of EQ first. It's really actually already nicely balanced. But I want to, it to pop a little bit more, so I will add some compression. Don't want to give you everything I have and see you walk away. Don't want It's just bringing it a little bit more up front by sausageifying it. That is a term. So many new terms today. Right. Next thing we need to do is use the auxiliary channels to feed some of that vocal. Now we can share the reverb. 
We can share the delay, but my feeling is with vocals, usually it's a good idea to have its own dedicated delay and reverb because it's something you really want to dial in and get just right. So that's what we're going to do. We'll create two auxiliary channels. One is going to be Vox Reverb. One of them is going to be Vox Dell. And we will color those a pale purple color so we know it's just for the vocals. And then next thing we need to do is get them dialed in. So let's get a reverb on there. I'm just going to use the Ableton reverb, but it doesn't really matter. There are lots of good reverbs out there, but we want a long decay, 100% wet. And let's feed some of that in. So that's E. Nice, already. I love that long reverb. So now we're going to put on an echo and it's all about trying to find the right timing for the delayed signal. So, into your arms again, again. Again. so not that one. Maybe it's one fourth. Into your arms again. I think that on ping pong mode is going to sound amazing. So let's try that. Bring in the stereo whip. Now I know that this is sounding a little bit washed out at the moment in terms of reverb and delay. So I'm going to show you a very special trick in a few minutes where we can ensure that reverb is going to pop through the mix every time. But first, boom, onto the next thing. Next thing is some lush chords. So we're going to use the strings. We have to thank my magic list for informing us about that. So all together now, thank you, magic list. We appreciate you. We think you're very special and we love the fact that you're alive in as so far as paper can be alive. So now let's get strings in there. I really like the Spitfire audio strings, but since I've got my M2 Mac, it ain't working. So sort it out Spitfire audio. So what I'm going to use instead is probably just some strings from Ableton. So I've got some good packs. I think the one I really like is the orchestral strings. So let's go find a strings ensemble. Legato, yeah, you'll do, mate. Get in there. And now we are going to use the same bass notes to program in our chords. This is where it gets really interesting because a lot of people get confused about building out chords, but if you know the bass notes, it's relatively simple. And here's why. Our bass notes, A to the F to the D to the F to the G. Or we could just copy them like so. So we're going to copy them from bass. We're going to go down to our strings section. We shall paste them in dutifully, like so. And then we are, we just want the one note from each each note. So we're just copy and paste that up there. Copy and paste that up there because this is a nice long sustained string. So we don't need you know this pulsing pattern. In fact, we need this kind of slower pattern. So let's have a listen to our strings at the moment and they should just be duplicating the bass notes. And if we listen to the bass we can hear it, that's what's happening. Okay, so now let's build these into chords. Now if we've hit the right scale, which as we know in this track is A minor, let's just choose it, A minor, and then hit scale, like so, we can just skip a note each time and build out these really lush chords. So that's the third, that's the fifth, because it's five intervals above the root, which is this, one, two, three for the third, four, five, and then six, seven for the seventh. And now we've got this chord. Don't tell me what you know is true. Okay, bit of in excess there, <laughs> ish, with the wrong lyrics of course, it's because it's don't ask me what you know is true. Yes, yes. So all, all I'm doing is skipping a note each time. You can see we've got this kind of hamburger effect. Weird looking hamburger, mate. Now this, is going to be a diminished chord. If it sounds weird, just whack that note up and it's going to sound good. 
But rather than have this big jump where we go from here up to here, let's just quantize that. I think that that's slightly off grid. There we go. What we want to do is have that all be a bit closer together. So I'm going to do what's known as chord inversions and try and bring all these notes within a closer range on the keyboard like that. So I'm just putting them down an octave like so. Let's bring this one down. We can bring this one up actually. And then they're really close. This might sound a bit weird actually. But for this one, because this is just the octave, we don't want to move it up there because it's then we're losing the character of that chord. But that is nice. And now if we put the bass notes in as well, I can't be bothered to do it. So let's just use the bass from the trance bass. So here we go. done with the strings is kind of expensify them by doing these chord inversions and bring everything closer together so there's there are more notes from each chord that lead into the next chord which stops them from sounding completely disjointed okay on to the next thing we want again a very 90s thing to do we want a choral kind of da -da -da gated trance type effect so i haven't actually practiced this yet so what i'm going to just i'm just going to try it okay so first we need like an R sound. So again, I'm gonna go and use contact for this. Not again, it's the first time I've used it for this project actually. But it doesn't matter what you use, as long as you've got a nice choir sound. Like that. Oh. I could just record my own choral sample pack. Let me know if you want me to. Actually don't. I already know that, that God doesn't want me to after that abominable singing. Right, let's go in here and then just program in. Again, we can use the same chords or we can just start with the bass notes, but we want to get this like du -du -du rhythm. So like this. What was that bop sound? Oh yeah, the singer, <laughs> that would be it. So again, we can go. Now that just sounds at the moment like sustained. So what we're gonna do is bring down the release So then we've got this kind of da -da -da effect and let's build out that chord. Exactly the same technique as before, but first I'll put all the bass notes in. Holy. I think that's the third one. And then we go up. And let's build out those chords, like so. We don't need to do the entire seventh. We could just stick to the first, the third and the fifth. Now that's too high, so the sample's not actually working up there, so again we're going to do a chord inversion, and now we've got this effect. I think the third chord is on the C, yeah. So let's put that in. C, and then two notes up. So using the exact same technique as we were with the strings, but for these ba ba bars. Just make sure it's all cool. Uh, that's too high. Uh, what is the third bass note? It's a D. Okay, that's where I went wrong, so we're going to have to move those all up. That's the right one. But we're going to take that down an octave for the same reasons as before. So now they're all closer together and with the strings. But I want this to be even more kind of stop starty. So what I'm going to do to do this is create a second trigger channel and this is going to use something that we're not actually going to hear it's just going to be used as a sidechain effect to make this choral sound really super like da -da -da, stop start 
There's a few ways you can do it, but I'm going to show you this way. So let's get any kind of sound there, and it's just going to be an operator, something that can be very short and sharp, stop and start. And let's just copy in this note here. Um, it doesn't matter which note it's hitting because we're never actually going to hear it. We're just using the audio signal as the trigger. So let's put, post that in and make sure it goes all the way to the end. And this is called the gated trance technique. So let's just make these shorter. We want these to be as short as possible, really. Yeah. So let's just... We want them to be sustains though, but we want there to be a little space in between each one, like so. So I'm holding Alt or Command and just dragging across. So it's this real Morse code sound, which might sound a bit horrible, but don't worry, we're not going to be using it. What we need to do is select sends only, and then we're going to send it to what's called a noise gate in this section here. So we're going to go gate. We're going to pull that after our choral sound. And then we're going to open this little button here and take the sidechain input from that trigger. And we're going to use that to duck this sound. So let's, let's just have a tweak. So this is what it was doing. So hear how much more we've tightened it up with this noise gate. And the noise gate's just taking the trigger from that trigger channel. So now, this is going to sound really good with just the drums and the kick and the bass. So let's just bring that in. And now we've got this choral effect. Let's add some room reverb. Nah. Okay, now we've got a couple more beautiful things to add to this before we start doing the arrangement and the mixing. So let's crack on. We want to create a really cool synth type sound. Again, I'm going to use Serum, the old Serum Anisto. Uh, let's call this Synth Riff. I'm going to color this Cyan, the natural color of synths. And then I'm going to drag on another instance of Serum, like so. And once again, Easiest thing to do is just program in the, the notes you want to hit before you start working on the sound design too much. Because then at least we know that we're hitting the right notes. And this is going to be very simple. This is really just going to be an octave jump, I think. And it's all about the rhythm. And we can slow down the tempo of the track if we want to really focus in on that rhythm. But it's not too hard because it's just going to be repeating 16th. And let's do it with the metronome. So kind of like that last trigger where it's kind of like a Morse code sound. That's all we're doing. And we could have that jump an octave, actually. I'm going to put that one down an octave and that one up. just to add more movement, and then I'm just going to repeat that. So it's going to sound horrible until we start tweaking in the shape of it. And it's all hitting one note, but because it's the root note of the track, listen to what happened when the notes below it change. It just feelsifies you. All right, let's tweak this. Again, we want it mono. Let's add the filter. Envelope. That's the effect we want. And that can op open up over time. Cool. So let's just add a little bit of reverb to that. 
No, that's the piano reverb. We'll just add room reverb. And a little bit of delay as well. I'll just do it on the channel for speed. Now that's cool. Okay, open it up. Okay, last thing we want to do is add some real texture in there with what I'm going to call a reso synth. It's going to be very resonant and much like the synth riff, it's going to just be hitting the root notes of the track. But what it's going to do is really add some movement and interest in there all the time. So let's call it reso pad actually. Again, let's color it cyan and we're going to start once again with a saw wave using serum. And it doesn't matter which synth you use guys, it's just the process that makes the difference. So let's program in that. And you'll notice if we look at our master channel, where everything playing at the moment, look at the levels we're hitting. Okay, taxi. All right, let's get there. Like the mix isn't done yet, and we need to turn some stuff down. But even before we've done the mix, we can see we've still got headroom on the master channel, so we're not running into clipping. And that's why I anchor my kick at minus 12 dB peak whenever I start a track, just to make sure I, I'm never going to run into clipping, or it's less likely. Ah, nice. All right, let's just program that in there. So again, A. Hey, I'm going to put just a long A. Hey, So it's going to sound like this at the moment, which is completely unnecessary. But what we need to do is add this constantly evolving motion. Now you can do this, as I said, with effect after the fact. I might do that actually, because then anyone who doesn't have serum can kind of follow along a bit easier. So we'll go to special effect and we go to flanger. And we're going to make sure that there's a lot of resonance in here as well. Uh, we'll choose an arbitrary Hertz amount. So this is the kind of effect we want. And it's really that really harsh feedback that's the, the thing that we're after. Let's turn this down because this is really crazy loud. I like the way it's panning as well though. So let's add a little bit more. What we're going to do is add a second one and then we'll add some phaser because I'm all about getting that movement coming through. We'll add some warmth. And you can see we've got some clipping here, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And then I'm going to filter out some of the frequencies. Now I'll put a reverb on first. Just to soften it down. And then I'm going to put on a filter, sorry, an EQ, and just take out some of those frequencies that we don't need. And now let's just fade this in slowly underneath everything and listen to the effect it has. Press it to make sure it's more even. So this is off. And this is on. Okay, let's mix this bad boy because it's sounding pretty good. Then we're going to have a break and a build and then into the drop. Okay, let's just uh, get it all nicely organized and we're going to mix it. So I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to take everything down and I'm going to just bring it all in around the kick. So, whoops, forgot to grab them all. Let's grab them all. 
Apart from the drum bus, because it's a bus, we're going to leave that at the maximum volume at zero dB, and then we can do the mixing within the drum bus itself here with these, these controls. So first we got the kick peak at minus 12. Whoops, let's just turn that off. To be honest, the drums are pretty good level anyway. All right, so now let's bring in the bass. That's pretty good, I think. We can do it in mono if we like. Just check in mono. I've got this mono switch for the keyboard shortcut to switch it to mono. Now let's bring in the vocal. Most important thing next. And now the main clap or snare. Let's try and bring that in. Now the hat. And then the 16th hat. And the loop. I think we can take out some of the high frequencies from that loop. And the lows. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, let's get to the break. So what we're gonna do for the break is create a re-space and we're gonna create a nice kind of organ sound that's gonna play those chords as well. So let's just bring all of this stuff out of the way. In fact, we'll just copy this over. We'll do our break here. So we'll, we'll start our break here and then we're gonna have the strings in the break 100%. Let's switch back to stereo. Reverb on the strings. And that's where we can have the build happen there. So next thing we need to do is create a re-space. And this is just for the break. So we are going to again select uh, Serum. And you can download this project file, all the samples completely free. And once again, let's just draw in those bass notes. So I'm going to copy them over from the trance bass and just make them prolonged. It's too loud. It's too loud, boy. Take it down. Let's go over here. And then we are going to copy that up to there. Copy it down. And then up there, let's take it down an octave. And now we need some unison on this. Some filter. And there we go. Nice. Now for the chords, for these organ chords, I'm literally just gonna copy the strings and take them down there. We might even just start off in the break with just the organ chord. And again, you can reference older music to get direction on the arrangement here. So let's bring in a contact, here we go. And let's just find a nice organ sound, vintage organs, that would be it. See how that sounds. Okay, I mean, it's the right kind of sound, but I think the notes are too low. So let's take them up an octave. And then let's change those chord inversions. And I want an octave down as well. Yes. Yes. 
So what I'm doing is kind of going down where everything else was going up, but we're still hitting the same notes. It's just adding more movement. And that one's too epic there, so, so we'll bring that one down like so. The reese bass comes in, augment. Yes, yes. All right, I'm gonna just kind of ad lib on this. So we'll start our break. And then we'll take the bass out here. That re-space, let's rename it. Piano. Let's increase that. That's, that's a nice long decay now. That's the one. Okay, this is how we're gonna build into this. We're gonna take this over here, the synth riff, and this is going to start off with a low cutoff. I don't, actually don't like that high up one. I prefer that. So we're going to use that and then we are going to just go open up the serum. We can hit configure and just automate this reverb cutoff. Not reverb cutoff, sorry, filter cutoff. So let's just bring that up like so. And then we're gonna have and then we'll we'll start back there on the drop where it all comes in. Or we can actually start with just the bass. Yeah, I like that. Now the drums come in. And you can kind of mix as you go as well. Like I can hear that claps a bit loud now. And then and then those open hats are gonna come in halfway through that. Okay. So let's start. This is gonna be our drop. We're gonna a big snare roll in there actually so what we can do is find a good snare and we go straight back down let's find a snare oh yes Actually, no, I think it's better if the open hats just come in there, not the clap. Like so, like so. Yes, come on. Keep the flow, Will, keep the flow. Okay, here we go. And then we're going to find a nice snare. Yes, that's perfect. Okay, Will's favourite, snare. There's a nice 909 snare. Let's bring that in there. Take out that reverb that's kind of baked into the sample, like so. So it's going to be shorter, like so. 
and let's uh, let's program that in on on the sixteenth. Remember, that's going to be quite loud. So let's turn it down. And what's going to happen is that if we reduce the first, let's make it on the sixteenth. But if we reduce the velocity, that's going to increase the volume as we go, because the velocity is by default attached to the volume if you're using Ableton. So now I need to figure out how to quickly grab this. Oh, I have to choose B, that's right. They made it complex in this one. No, that's wrong. It used to be easier in Ableton 10. No, that's not drawing the thing. I don't know why they did this, but it, it there we go at last. All right, so it's command and option to draw a line, a nice even line like so. So let's just make that last one, that first one, sorry, quieter. So now we've got this effect. Let's go to the drop and just do it. Just do it. Oh, and we need a... Too loud now, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so what we're going to do is get a nice cymbal crash in there. Why does that suddenly go quieter there? Ah, because I did it to the open hats as well. We don't want that. That was the mistake I made. Okay, let's try again and just get a symbol. Now we need a nice 909 crash symbol. So let's see if I've got any here. No, let's go to some symbol splash. That one, perfect. So let's program that in. One, two, three, four, again, in a 90s kind of style. Okay, so just four crashes leading in to the break, to, to the drop. Last thing we need to add, last thing we need to add is the ride symbol to really open this up and, and have it full guns blazing. So we're going to go to my favorites again, ride symbols, and then a classic kind of dance music ride. And then we haven't even done side chain compression on the bass, you know, we haven't even needed to really. And then the classic ride symbol pattern is going to be on the eighths, so eighths to every bar. And now let's listen to this effect. Okay, guys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed that. Oh, that's given me tingles now. So I'll do a little bit more work on this and make it possible for you to download it below. But if you enjoyed this, please like it and subscribe, all that gubbins. And if you want coaching with me to get your music to sound as professional as possible, as quickly as possible, you can click the link below and check out my music production accelerator program, whereby we've helped some of our students get signed to some of the world's biggest labels, such as Armada and Junior Beats, Spinning Records, and many, many more. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you next time. In the meantime, there is another tutorial on creating old school trance. So check that out if you enjoyed this. And I'll catch you next time. Till then, cheers. And I'll see you soon.